Hello everybody, welcome to Jordan's Dracula Junction, where me and my friends are going to play some Dungeon Crawl Classics with Judge Lex. What are we playing today, Lex? Today we are playing Doom of the Savage Kings, the level one Dungeon Crawl Classics module written by Harley Stroh. A classic. And we are joined by three really great people. Let's start with... Sarah, who are you? Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Sarah Roberts. I use any pronouns, and you can find me everywhere as the Hype Goblin. I'm just a, a funny little guy on the internet. Jen, who are you? Sorry, I made Sarah sound like they were a virus, so I'm <laughs> just like <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> I'm just shaving away coins from your bank account. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, my name is Jen Vaughn. My pronouns are she, they. You can find me anywhere as the Jenya, and I'm a game designer and cartoonist. Thank you. And Diogo. Hey, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Diogo Nogueira. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I'm from Brazil. I'm a game designer and artist. And I also have a podcast now too. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, you can find me at uh, Diogo underline old school. Uh, like the bone in your head, not the place you go, you know, to meet people. <laughs> and maybe study i don't know uh but yeah that's it nice and you know who jordan and i are if you're watching this channel so it's fine uh <laughs> but uh yeah we're playing dcc today as we talked about earlier and uh this is the the first actual play we're doing on the jocular junction we're gonna try and do it in one hour episodes we're gonna see how well that works for days you have traveled through the dark brooding forests and across the desolate wind-swept moors all about you is the endless gray either the cold mists hanging on the valley floors or the dark clouds piling atop the bare, craggy peaks. Your destination is Herat, a lonely village set at the foot of the Trolltooth Mountains, with its promise of a warm hearth and good company. Until then, your only companions are the ravens that circle overhead and the howl of distant wolves in the night. Your reverie is broken by muffled screams and the sight of shuffling forms ahead in the mists. And we're going to find out what everybody does. And I'm just going to go in the same order I did last time with Jordan at the end. Uh, Sarah, what do you do? And what does your character look like? Uh, I am playing character whose name I totally thought of earlier. I'm going to name him Bob. Uh, okay. I am playing Bob the Mushroom Dwarf. Uh, and Bob is currently shaking his spear up at the crows in the sky uh looking over at the wizard saying those are your surveillance things aren't you aren't they i know i know what you wizards are up to those crows aren't real so question do you you hear people up ahead do you do anything in response to that specifically I'm just going to assume they're more wizards making more crows and sticking them up that's, in the sky to watch us all. That's fine. That's perfectly yeah. appropriate. Uh, Jen, what does your character look like and how do you respond to this? Uh, my character uh, going against uh, said prototypes, going against stereotype uh, is a parsnip thief and her name is Zinc White. And so she, instead of being wrapped completely in uh, dark clothes, she's actually wearing like a series of white, most opalescent uh, clothes like a tunic and like a shimmering snakeskin belt and little boots so she doesn't necessarily hide in the shadows as more as hide in the light but the shadows you know behind the light or behind the shadows so when she sees the uh or hears the birds and hears what bob says she's like i don't know i think that might be um some sort of uh, uh some sort of security system actually so and then she uh using uses one of her thief abilities to hide in the shadows or behind them Which roll for that to roll for that yeah <laughs> with a plus two <laughs> a big old four so Ooh. turns out that white outfit is not actually great, super great for hiding who would have guessed <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Zink goes to duck behind a very slim tree. Uh, Diogo, what does your character look like, and what do you do? Uh, well, my character is is a uh, middle-aged man, like uh, with brown skin of the sun, and then he's really tall, but he has kind of a little belly, and it's gray hair, gray beard. Uh, he worked as as the tax collector before, so uh, he has seen a lot of shit, and he has actually been expelled from the tax collectors because uh, he was he wasn't corrupt, so that that wouldn't fly there, you know. So he got kicked out, and now he's he's an adventurer because he he still has to you know eat and stuff. So, but he's still kind of stickler for the rules. So. Uh, as he see people, as he as, as he hear, you know, uh, this noise, he he tries to try to go with the thief because he knows the thief hides well. But you know, it's maybe it's not gonna work out for him. But uh, he tries to hear uh, a little bit better what might be happening or, or approaching, where the the sounds are coming from. Or actually, yeah, give me a. Give me a roll for that. I want to just see if we can, I can give you some extra info on what you're hearing. Okay. Uh, what is that? It's intelligence. What is? Okay. Oh, I'm gonna thirteen. Should I oh, add anything okay. or? Um, you could do I'm... intelligence or. Yeah, I don't. I don't just have stamina and strength, so I don't think any of those will help with this. <laughs> well, but I really listening with all my strength you know <laughs> yeah um, uh you hear that there is um it's a large group of people probably like almost maybe 50 people that are shuffling uh towards you uh and they're all sort of uh yelling uh and seem kind of like maybe not angry but sort of uh d definitely unhappy uh and you can hear one person in particular who just keeps being like no don't do this um jordan what does your character look like and what do they do yeah i am am tall with a, a green cloak that kind of hangs a dark green cloak that hangs down over me um i've got uh leather shoes that have kind of like a tree print on them and a bow on my back and uh my hood is up but you see that there's like some pointy ears sticking up top and i take it down and i look out over there and i say i am douglas fur son of amder elfson who is the son <laughs> of elves also known as douglas the daring douglas the distinctive and douglas the dashing and there are some who call me christmas pete and you will not harm this forest and I just kind of look really brooding at the people running up. Oh, nice. Uh, Diogo, did we have a name for your character? Yeah, it's Harun. H-A-R-U-M. Oh, I thought it was a double O-M. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, all right. Grim Peasants. Their dirt-lined faces drawn with fear emerge from the gloom, all bear crude weapons, wood axes, staves, pitchforks, and long knives. The mob drives a raven-haired young man before them, gagged and bound with a thick rope. He squirms and fights them with every step. Trailing the mob uh, are solemn figures astride war horses, the telltale glint of armor flashing beneath their wolfskin cloaks. Zink turns to Harum, um, uh, uh, peeking out from behind the tree where she's very well hidden. Um, uh, can't you do something? Like, can't you pretend that they need to like pay uh, some fine for I don't know, so killing someone? That's what it looks like. <laughs> oh, that's a very good idea. Hey, what's going on there? This seems like some kind of sacrifice or something or or some kind of violence do you have a permit from that from the king did you yeah. pay your taxes T tell him about the bird tax that'll get him 
<laughs> yeah, and, and that too, the, the bird tax. Yeah. Um, the uh, the the uh, person who's in the front, who's tied up, being driven by this mob, stops in front of you, um, looking very hopeful <laughs> that that you're you're trying to stop them, and the mob sort of slows down, just like what what's going on with this. Uh, some of the riders ride forward. Um, uh, and one of them in particular, this like bear of a man, just huge middle-aged guy, um, salt and pepper beard, uh, comes up and he's like, in this no. gruff voice, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> in this gruff voice, he's just like, out of the way, knaves. I am the Jarl here and I decide what is right. You outlanders, stay out of our business. What? Are you defying the king? You owe him taxes for this. You can't go around dragging people and into a mob. Do you have a permit for a mob of that size? This is going to yeah. cost you a fortune. I'm counting like 49 uh, and 50 people, Harum. Okay, 50. Yeah, including, yeah. That's... Including the bound guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a furious mob. It's according to section three, paragraph two Ugh. of the rioting legislation says that a rioting mob is not, not just any mob. A rioting mob, it's five gold pieces per individual. Do you, do you have that to pay now? Because if you don't, that's going to cost you triple to pay afterwards. Oof. Um, make and a personality you, roll, then, please. Then you add on that bird tax, and oh, that, yeah. that just really starts to add up. That's that's at least two gold 18, per 18. surveillance bird. Oh, <laughs> per surveillance bird. There's a whole murder of surveillance crows up there. <laughs> uh, with an 18, one of the uh, other riders, uh, what are, like knights or something, rides up uh, next to the, the middle-aged man and says, Jarl, this doesn't, we, it's, it's as if the, 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 maybe the regent has sent someone. We know what we've been doing would have stirred up controversy, controversy eventually. And they, the Jarl like looks to him grimly. He's like, uh. so, he, so you've done this multiple times. <laughs> Did yeah, you pay you the taxes every yeah, single yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. Or? yeah, yeah. I'm, back I'm gonna taxes have will to kill take, you. Take notes of this. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a confession. You you hear that, right? What's your badge Those... number, Jarl? <laughs> Those birds look unlicensed too. It looks like they've got a little like piece of cloth over their badge number. That doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. No. The, uh, no. <laughs> uh, the the knights seem mildly convinced the jarl is somewhat unmoved he's he's a little seems a little concerned about it but he's just like he's like listen you don't understand the curse that we're under if we don't sacrifice someone tonight it'll be that most of the town will be in danger um you're welcome to take their place but someone well, is being sent to the stones I, i'm very interested this most of the town will be in danger is there mm. anyone that's excluded for danger for some reason? Probably the poor part of town, right? They're still in danger. <laughs> like, wow. Are you laughing as Ulex or as the Jarl? No. It's I'm laughing as me. <laughs> if I'm la these characters are all very grim. If I'm laughing, it's always me. Don't, don't in the, for the purposes of this adventure. If I laugh, it's me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Gentrification <laughs> of danger. What's mm. next? Yeah. Mm. What, we, what, should, how we should rise up. We okay. should <laughs> overthrow our oppressors. Absolutely. This curse. Danger for everybody. You know, how, how often do you sacrifice people? Like your town just going to get smaller and smaller until there's nothing to sacrifice people for. Well, one of the townsfolk runs up to Zink and says, yeah. Oh, that's who will reduce their taxes at least. Mm. Uh, uh, so one of these villagers runs up to them and is just like, it's terrible. It's terrible. Every every three days we have to bring someone to the stones for every, the hound. Every three days? I I sorry, I counted all of you. That's in 150 days. You're all gone. You're kaput. What and, yeah, the, the This Yarl is not is cost like, effective. <laughs> <laughs> this curse is this is yeah, I'm, no, this is bad. This is Yarl, do you know how much it costs to incorporate a town? You're gonna lose you're gonna lose all that money. 
And then she like uh, looks at Harum and she goes, Thanks for the lessons. <laughs> the, the, the Jarl um <laughs> growls at you and the townsfolk that has that has run up to you. It, it's like Our sorcerer is working on the problem. This is the best way, says their divinations. And you remember, and they point to the townsfolk, what it was like before the sacrifices. We'd lose almost a dozen townsfolk a night when the beast came in and breaking through the walls, slaughtering everyone it saw. Well, if there's a beast afoot, it sounds like we just need to take care of this beast rather than, you know, mm. sacrificing a bunch of people. Why haven't, why haven't you just gone out and, and you know, killed a beast? I'm Are you not men of bravery? Right oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm going to break my own rule right now. The, the, the Jarl laughs grimly. Ha! <laughs> it's like, outlanders, you're welcome to try. My best knights have been slain by the creature. Oh, so you did had... at least. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Jen, go ahead. No, no, so you have sent at least somebody tried something before you just started sacrificing people. Wasn't plan A. <laughs> he looks, he's like, no, of course we tried to fight the beast first. But it cannot be killed. Where is this beast located? Uh, let's see. Would he know? Uh, he would be like, uh, I've sent hunting parties out to try to find out where it dens, but none have returned. Do you know what brought this curse upon your town? That you no. are forced <laughs> to go out and sacrifice raven-haired boys with birds in the sky? <laughs> <laughs> Who the, uh, said it's a curse? Yeah, I, I thought we did. we actually did. We uh, did. We yeah. we called it a curse. That's on us. <laughs> mm. I think yeah. I think they might have also called it a curse. Okay. Uh, you, well, you said it's at night and every three nights, and tonight's the night, right? Tonight's the night. Yeah. So you know what that means? Zinc looks at her all of her compatriots. You know what that means? Steak out, steak out with our special drink, steak oh. out. Uh, yeah. I didn't snacks. actually know that, but I'm I'm excited now. So um, you, you get a little too excited over sitting around and doing nothing for hours on end. I will say and we're eating and talking and bonding. <laughs> it's a team building thing. Everyone, come on. <laughs> you know what? I mean, That's fine. I'm in. I've got some new documentation on surveillance cats that I think you all will be uh, interested in hearing. There's a reason why they don't move often. <laughs> <laughs> this extremely paranoid dwarf uh the <laughs> so the the jarl says the, the jarl sort of like uh it, he's no longer laughing but he is still smiling at you and he says well the standing stones are that way about another mile you're welcome to wait for the beast there yourself I'm you got sure. any sitting stones over there? Oh, no. It's standing stone only. Sorry. What about <laughs> leaning stones, you know? Like, yeah. you got time to lean, well, you got time to clean. These stones. We can get creative. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, he's just like, uh, he's like, yeah, you're welcome to uh, to go there and wait for the beast yourself. Is that where you take oh. the, the sacrifices? Yeah. I. That's where we take them. Where do Worst they Where do they go afterwards? Us. Do you know? Do you find them washed <laughs> up later on? Do they just disappear? Oh, we find... <laughs> They're left there. The The hound usually tears them apart. It doesn't tend to eat its kills. So you watch? Does... You monster. You just <laughs> enjoy that? That's just wasteful. Yarl, just... more like yuckle. <laughs> yuckle. <laughs> that, that's, just, that's just... We need to take care of this monster. It's just being wasteful now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not no, using I mean, every part of the sacrifice. I mean, come on, what is totally. that in this economy? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's gonna up your tax of the sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Too, yeah. Does exactly. someone clean up afterwards, or do every time you put a new sacrifice in, are they just like knee deep in others? That's for... what all the birds are here for. Oh, oh, Haroom. This is oh. why we made you our leader, Haroom. You're the <laughs> right. smart one. I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob's like, I thought I was the leader. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I, was like, I am notes. the leader. <laughs> <laughs> he points to uh, one of his, one of the villagers, uh, and he says, uh, you, Brogan, 
Lead them to the stones. The rest of us will head back to Herat. What does our friend that's been uh, bound, who has now at least earned three more days of life, what is what, what do they do? They're they're super happy. Um, uh, the you assume Brogan comes up to you and on his way over, it's like this sort of uh heavy set bald guy. Uh, he unties uh the bound person, and then uh gives him a hug. And the 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 bound young man is, or the or the older guy is like, "You're gonna be okay, Morgan. You're gonna be okay." And the the younger person is like, "It's like as long as you make it back, father." And then Brogan's like, "Okay, yeah, I'll make it back. Wait for me at the inn." Uh, and the bound person runs back into the crowd. Uh, and Brogan comes up to you and he says, "Come on, it's almost dark." Uh, I guess let's go, right? Yeah, we could talk about your life choices and letting your son die first instead of you know volunteering. Yeah. That's a little, that's a little screwed up. Mm -hmm. Hope totally. we got money for therapy or something, man. Right? Don't worry the 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 birds record it all, so you know they mm -hmm. can be uh, they can be used in a court of law. So mm -hmm. they probably sacrificed all the therapists first. <laughs> you know that was that, me. That would be that would probably be the play. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a town like this. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. So many surveillance yeah. birds. Sacrificed all these people. I wish I had someone to talk to. Oh. Oh, indeed. Mm. I made a um, choice. That's what the, you're saying. Uh, the townsfolk and the uh, their armed escort turn to head back to the village. Somewhere down the road. And uh, uh, Brogan uh, joins you folks and says... Uh, He's like, thank you so much. Uh, he uh, probably goes to her room first to to shake your hand. Um, he's like, I'm so glad someone's come from the king to finally sort the situation out. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. We are, yeah, we are. Yeah, we were all sent from by the king. Yeah, yeah. And thank you. Uh, it's it's. It was uh, what's what's uh her uh, what's Jen's uh, character name? Sorry. Oh, Zinc. Uh, it was Zinc idea to ask about the the taxes here. Uh, we're yeah, we we're gonna check other towns, but we we saw that and then we had to take some actions for sure. Yeah, we're 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 a, a real functional group of friends. I mean, colleagues. Yeah. As she like reaches out a hand, and then instead of her like pale lavender hand coming out of it, it's like a little like orange chicken foot, and she's like, I'm "Get back in there." <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, uh, lead lead the way, Brogan. Like, Brogan, how so many people have died to this beast so far? Good question. As you lead us along the path. Yeah, look, we can walk oh, it it's standing started, leaning stones. <laughs> it started. Uh, it started a few weeks ago. The uh, the hound came out of the forests, broke through the town walls, slaughtered everyone it saw, and then disappeared. Wow. And it would come back every night. Uh, it wasn't until uh, the Jarl sorcerer told told us through some old druidic rites there that we could sacrifice someone every three days to sate the beast's blood beast's bloodlust it seemed to work so far there's a lottery so that you know it's random who's chosen but i'm so yeah I'm random so happy but i that bet it wasn't uh, my son i bet the poor people get picked a lot more huh Got a he's real, like, got a real Hunger Games vibe going on over here. <laughs> he's like, well, there's only one rich man in uh, Herat, and that's the Jarl. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. When did this sorcerer show up? Has he been around the whole time, or did he magically appear when the problem appeared? Well, he's a sorcerer. It's like, no, Silru has has always been the Jarl sorcerer for many years. 
not that I trust him, but <laughs> the sacrifices mm. seem to have worked thus far. At least the creature isn't stampeding through the village every night. Yeah. It's a real Attack on Titan kind of vibe going on here. Oh, yeah. You ever uh, think about leaving out a Scooby snack? Maybe it's just hungry, you know? Yeah, like your finest uh, bottle of mead and just some thick, mm -hmm. thick stew. Yeah. Anyone know how, how is this beast like? <laughs> it always... Uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Diego, what did you say? Does anyone know how does this beast is like? How? What it looks like? What is this beast like? Yeah. How does it uh, look like? What it does? Uh, what is how, it doing in its does... free time, Brogan? Yeah. What is it doing? What is it? What are its interests? No, <laughs> how has he been killing like the best knights of the draw? And, and if he has attacked the village, maybe he saw the, the creature and anyone saw the creature. He's like, oh, I've seen it. Uh, a massive monster. Uh, the face and the body of a wolf. Uh, but with the arms of a serpent, or not a serpent, but a, a, like a reptile. The <laughs> arms so of So no snake. arms, no. <laughs> um, the uh, arms of snakes. <laughs> the, uh, the arms of His arms could be snakes. Kind of like a barrel <laughs> that just like wiggles around. You think it's yeah. a corgi, but no. It's evil. <laughs> It's Us laughing, just snakes. off putting Brogan as to how successful we'll be. Like, now imagine this as a cartoon when he's describing the creature, all like making gestures and like really just... <laughs> how big I is the I think beast? it's one of those. It's like one of those cartoon shots where the drawing keeps changing. Everything every time our theory changes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, as big as a war horse, easily. The uh, you know. When it went through the town, it always ignored the livestock. It's like it, it's like it hated the people. And you said it's not uh, eating the sacrifices. No, it never feeds. It just rips them apart. Hmm. Maybe it's vegetarian. Has <laughs> it ever been injured? When the when the Thanes fought at last, uh, they did draw blood, but not enough to take it down. And when it came back the next night, it had no, no lasting wounds. Do you think this thing can be killed? Mm. Broken. Maybe. There's a, there's a bard that frequents my inn. Uh, she knows a lot of the legends, and she says that there's a, an ancient spear that might be able to kill it in some tomb, but no one's been able to find it. Like, no one's been able to find the spear inside the tomb, or no one's been able to find the tomb? Uh, no one's been able to find the tomb. And a, a bartender told you this. No, a, a bard. A he's, bard. He's like, oh, I, bard. I'm sorry. That's I'm, even I'm, worse, honestly. Yeah, have, right? you, have you heard the stories <laughs> bards tell? Eesh. He says, he's like, oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't say earlier. I run the, the inn in town. Uh, mm. if, you, if you make it through tonight, uh, I'll give you all the free drinks you want. All right. A and a place to stay. Yeah. Oh, yes. That is one. Okay. Just, I, and if you could just sign here saying that that was a verbal agreement. That we <laughs> a, pl all... a place, yeah. a place in the inn. I have all Remember the people. Remember last time we had to right. sleep in the barn. Yeah. yeah. Place in I the think, inn. I think we're, all, but I think we're all cool with like one room and bunk beds, you know? Because we're friends. Sure. I mean, colleagues. Because <laughs> we we're all really good friends. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, uh uh, at that, the uh, the trees part, and you see the standing stones. Standing stone only. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, let's see. Um, uh, the standing stones rest atop a low, craggy bluff. At the corner of the stones, 
uh, or I'm sorry, at the center of the stones is a squat um, stone block. A trio of ravens stands atop the mossy stone, pecking at trails of gore. Four holes are bored into that block, and thick coils of rope are looped through the stone to make crude shackles. Yikes. Um, I you can see that Brogan yeah. gets visibly uncomfortable <laughs> as, he, as he sees yeah. the, the the horrible well, remains there. How would we find your, your town if we survive tonight and need to find you? Uh, he says the the way you were headed, just another couple miles down that road. Okay. Do you know when the creature comes? It's when the moon is the highest or anything like this? Sometime during the night. Perfect. But don't worry, it'll come. Um, is this place sacred to, to your town or were, has this always been here? These standing stone only? <laughs> the sorcerer says it used to be used for druidic rites in ancient times. Uh, but it had been largely abandoned until recently. Being an elf of the forest, would I know anything about this place? Like its significance? Oh, roll me an intelligence roll. Nice. Okay. Uh, it didn't work. Let's try it again. <laughs> Yay, Let's roll 20. Thanks, Six. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Is not Dr good. Druidic okay. rites. The uh, yeah, I mean, definitely had some sort of significance. There's lots of runes carved into them. Fancy. Can uh, I cast like to... comprehend languages to understand <laughs> these runes? You can also do that. Um, is anyone else going to do anything? I'd like to lick a rock to figure out what kind well, of rock it is. Ooh. I mean, if he's going to do some sorcery and stuff, and I know how sorcery works in DCC, I'm going to step away from the, <laughs> from the stone circles <laughs> for a bit while he does his, his thing. It's, mine. <laughs> it's fine. Haram, actually, come over here. It'll be better if you stand right a little to the left. Yeah, <laughs> right there. Now, look down. Don't look at me while I cast this. I can't do it if I, you're looking. I, I will do it, but just with like my left foot wide when he wants me, oh. and the rest of me like just all the way over at, here, you know. At the rock I am <laughs> looking, I rolled a four. Oh, <laughs> this is some real good granite you got here. How, how tall is the are the standing stones? Oh, probably like ten or fifteen feet. Okay, uh, zinc just slides right up them using climb sheer surfaces, or. Nice steps on one and then it looks like whoop, they're going you know like the earth spins for them and then a 13 oh yeah sure okay that's walks awesome. up them and then is there anything on top that's interesting can no, i see no. anything? You, oh well you can see um the the forest stretch oh actually it's very misty so the forest stretches out pine trees you know in all directions uh <clears throat> It looks like far to the north, the the forest might um, thin out into like a marsh. But it's it's tough because it's so foggy. Um, oh, also, sorry. Did I did uh, I cut off uh, did I cut off Bob's licking description? No. no. Bob Bob uh, is just looking up at zinc with two thumbs up. It's definitely a rock. <laughs> ah, mm. perfect, perfect. The, um, it's uh, definitely see... geography out here. So, <laughs> do we see any any like marks on the rocks or from, or from fights or anything? Uh, from of the knights, do we have weapons? Did any combat happen here? Do we have like weapons or marks of recent claws? Any or dropped scales can... or fur or yeah. any teeth from oh, them? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the uh, there are definitely deep gouged claw marks in the the stone that the people are tied to for sacrifice. That's a thing. Uh, <laughs> but 
you don't see you don't immediately see any weapons you can search the area a little more thoroughly if you'd like i just want to point out that uh brogan is probably is there going armor? to leave unless you uh unless you want him to stay for anything oh yeah no he he gets totally yeah we just need the name of I that think, inn sir right? oh the name of the inn mm-hmm long pause there you not know the name of your inn oh this is <laughs> the it's, sign of the wolf it's a hard spear. moment hey his tongue almost died. His kid almost died. So you're right. Give no, him some right. slack. Shot. Yeah. I know. I'm yeah. kidding. I'm sorry, Brogan. Day. First, <laughs> first, his name's yeah. Brogan. He's not happy about that. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, bro. You don't have to tell us you're uh, you're in. We'll find it. We'll find it by oh. scent. Yeah. No. Brogan, uh, sounds so like I... he's in an Abergoblin and Fitch catalog or something. <laughs> mm. All of a sudden, Brogan you hear a, a slow great clap. Name, I was in <laughs> <laughs> uh the uh the sign of the wolf spear is the name of the inn. Whoa. Um wait, the wait, the wolf legend. spear? Yeah, the wolf spear of legend that he was talking about. So oh, okay. It so it's got a name that was not given to us during that description. I just forgot. Yeah. That's I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but, just trying to uh, give Brogan the 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 this, you know, not you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> the uh um <clears throat> but yeah, he's gonna he's gonna ski daddle. Um Diogo, were you gonna? Was Harum gonna search the area a little more thoroughly? Um, as yeah, the sun I, sets, I, I, would, I guess everybody has time to yeah, do something. I would try to search there because my armor sucks, and so I'm gonna be the warrior. I need. I'm hoping to find anything of the best victims here that I can still use. Eighteen. Oh wow, your your dice are hot today. You find? Yeah, um, I can't show you. <laughs> it's oh no! It's, oh no! It's lost. No. Ah, <laughs> Sorry. Those are great dice. <laughs> Let me get my glasses. Maybe I can make it out. <laughs> well, uh, I'm like turning back now. Yeah. Well. Uh, get one of the birds to help you with that. They can zoom yeah. in. <laughs> the. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Let me try this. You can, you do. I will point out that you find a number of different um, uh, hmm. old sets of armor. It looks like, yeah, there was some fighting here like a long time ago. Um, there are some very overgrown um, skeletons mm -hmm. uh, wearing bronze armor and uh, clutching swords and spears and axes um most of this equipment is pretty much destroyed by time uh but i would say sure there's a set of armor for an 18 there's a set of armor in there that's still totally wearable maybe uh, like instead of giving like uh the full like a chain mail like instead of plus five plus four yeah or no I, like that's this. i was yeah. i was thinking something like that so right. yeah, you find an old bronze breastplate that can give you the the plus four uh, armor. Okay, looking good. <laughs> uh, I did a sixteen on my comprehend languages. Oh, comprehend languages. Uh, what is a sixteen on that spells? Table? I can read and understand, but not speak or write one terrestrial language for ten minutes or one turn. Terrestrial oh. languages are spoken by mortal earthbound creatures such as dwarves, giants, and goblins. Would I recognize anything? Yes. This ancient druidic language, you can read it perfectly. Um, it speaks of... Uh, uh, it talks about the hound, uh, which is interesting to you because this is like hundreds of years old. Mm-hmm. But it is clearly discussing a demon hound that uh, was uh, some sort of primordial creature of chaos that has been... It came down into the valley and started just killing people. Um, many warriors fought against it, um, but to no avail. Um, for whenever the creature is killed... It will dissolve into smoke and then reform again the next night. Uh, I kind of relay that to my colleagues, and I'm like, uh, we might be in over our heads. Not, yeah. This is pretty spooky, guys. Um, 
but then it it goes on to say only the champion um of Hionair was able to slay the beast and was that with a, a magic stick like a spear of some kind <laughs> it does it does mention the spear of of Hionair. this is very beowulfy um but uh yeah Uh, okay. Cool. So without that spear, we're just gonna be wasting some time and some blood, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll turn mm -hmm. to Bob and be like, "I've only got this for another eight minutes. Do you have any dwarven books I can read? I'm just really excited." <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, here you go. You can you can read this one. Uh, this is about the birds. It's a uh, it's an updated version. <laughs> of the last text that I showed you. And I also have this one. It's about the lizard folk that are currently taking over the monarchy back home. Oh. Uh, that's, a, that's a really good read. Yeah. I've made a terrible choice, out. but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, badly wow, the... photocopied. Um, the <laughs> fall of, of 1711 was an inside job. This is interesting. <laughs> I better keep reading. Bob's hat is just a piece of tin foil that's molded <laughs> around his head. He thinks it's armor. Does it, were there any other, like during that little poem or the inscription you read, were there any arrows or any like drawings next to the words that would help us figure out yeah. where the tomb is? There a, is there a map? Like yeah, kind of look I mean, around yeah. on these standing stones? Like, <laughs> there, is there, there a is you are here a sign? <laughs> there is, there is there any is directions, a coordinations? <laughs> there is a mention of a uh, uh, a burial mound for Ulfhioden. Okay. Uh, and it talks about... Uh, it's described as a serpent mound. Do we know what that is? Uh, not really. <laughs> it's just described as uh, like a... That, that's how it's described. Doesn't see, doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense to you. Upon reading it, maybe but. it's an earth mound that's shaped like a serpent or just a big pile of snakes. Just a big pile of snakes, which is even worse because then it could move. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not in one location, so <laughs> yeah, nothing, they, nothing worse than a mobile pile of snakes. <laughs> that bard might know more. Maybe we, if we can check back in yeah. town, people in town, if we survive, we can probably find something. Yeah, wait, oh, quiet. Um, and I listen. What do I hear? Oh. You, is it well, even was, is it even dark? No. <laughs> I was gonna say you do hear something. Oh, <laughs> um, the uh, uh, zinc sees it before everybody else does. Uh, but there's suddenly uh, you hear the cawing of just a, a whole flock of birds uh, as they burst up into the air, and zinc, you see that coming from the north something is pushing its way through the trees and it's what has like caused the birds to freak out yeah incoming at three o'clock i'd like to run up into a tree if possible <laughs> sure get my bow out <laughs> do you know where it's coming from the direction yeah, yes like i'm pointing at it i'm like at three o'clock <laughs> or wherever the trees are uh Jordan, give me a strength to climb the tree oh, properly. Of course. <laughs> I just want to see how far up you can get. I'm going to stand on Two. the block <laughs> with my shield and then the sword waiting the, from the direction it's coming from. Because it's higher ground, right? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine uh, I okay. run up the side of the tree, hold on, and then just like slide down. <laughs> this is so sappy. I didn't realize yeah, it was wow. so difficult. To Normally hear. the sap is sicky. This one is strangely slick. I don't understand. Uh, what does Bob do? Bob's going to stand behind that stone that he licked. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good stone. Got a good, stone's got a good taste to it. Uh, okay, cool. Um,. And I assume Zinc is staying up on top of the stones where they are. Absolutely. Um, and her tunic has like a big hood that is 
you all know it's like it's got a little there's like movement inside the hood and so she just places the small package from that was in her hood her black little hen down on the the stone next to her just like you stay here you don't move stay out of sight also because i don't know how to use you as equipment <laughs> Fair. Yeah, she's got she's got uh she's got some darts out ready to go in her hand oh good okay uh all right let's see here um let's roll initiative so glad i have a plus zero for welcome to dcc <laughs> oh come on dice roller six I'm getting physical dice out. Thirteen for zinc. I rolled Bob six. rolled another four. I also rolled a four. <laughs> yeah. Well, Doug's to be fair, I said I was in the, in the block with the shield and the long sword, waiting for whatever was coming. So. That's kind of a ready action, right? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's this thing definitely isn't going to surprise you as it bursts into the standing stone <laughs> clearing. Um, let's see. Uh, Zinc got a thirteen. Uh, Harum got a six. Bob and Doug both got fours, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Just making sure. Um, well, with my eighteen. Uh. <laughs> As we can all see from roll 20, I'm not making it up. The uh, the hound bursts into the clearing. Oh, gosh. It is, it's terrible and huge. Uh, it's got, yeah, it's got sort of the head of a wolf. It's got uh, the arms and underbelly of like a dragon. Uh, it's got, uh, the it howls, but its howl is like really guttural and like distorted sounding and it has this long forked tongue um it sees you all there um one of you is specifically on the stones so it's going to attack them me uh all right Does a 19 hit you? 19? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, it attempts to claw at you. And it just has one attack. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it rakes its claw across your body, dealing. I should, you know, physical dice are quicker. Three points of damage. Hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> that would kill Think. me. I just looked at my hit points before I chose this character. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention. I was like, ah, an elf sounds cool. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, I... Zink, what do you do? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, the creature is moving rapidly. Well, it did move rapidly. Getting it came into the the center there. of the stage. But now it stopped in it. Then, yeah, it's it's slashing at um, Harum right now. Okay. Um, I can't remember how many I'm allowed to throw at once. I guess just one. Um, uh, Zinc is going to uh, like close one eye and just go by the power of Parsnip, and then she's gonna aim for the butt of the creature. Oh, nice. So it feels like it's being attacked from behind. And. Oh, or sorry, first the roll eighteen. Um, eighteen will hit. Yeah, but not for a lot. Everybody, calm down. <laughs> what about sneak attack damage? I don't Was know. I that's hidden up to in the, the shadows? That's up on to top the of the DM. rock. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. You, you know, it probably doesn't. You're, you're way up there. Yeah, like how high can it? Is it like a dog where it can't see above a it's, certain? You know, I can't look up. Go, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just um, like we're just like headless beings. So I'd say it's probably not aware of 
a, a couple of you yet. I mean, it probably knows that Jordan is there just because he didn't climb the tree very well. And it my name is Douglas that, Fur. I'm sorry. It knows that, son it knows of... that it knows that Doug is there. So it you knows know that trees. The room is there. It probably doesn't know Bob and Zinc are there because Bob yeah. is standing behind a rock. Uh, and zinc is up above. So yeah, I would give you zinc. And zinc is that. has higher ground, it has mm-hmm. advantage, and and you know. All right, so that's gonna be a oh, plus. That's gonna be a seven damage. Ooh, nice. Okay, Harum. Doesn't zinc attack uh, if it hits? Does uh, critical damage for Tiffs and you roll on the table and stuff? Oh, yeah, oh, I think so. Oh, yeah, oops. If we want to, yeah, which we, we should. Do, if we want to, yeah. if we want to play the game that we decided to play, no, then... no, no. <laughs> um, I mean, get it. Oh, backstab, they call it, yeah. Uh, you I automatically think... achieve a critical hit rolling on the critical table. Uh, yeah, yes. I have the um, I have the the purple sorcerer crawler thing up for the critical table. If you tell me which uh, table you're on, I and which is... dice too, right? Uh, you're level one, so your crit die would be ten table two. So roll a d10. Got it. And if you have I've a got... bonus to your luck, let us know. I got a three plus. I got four with the luck. <laughs> four on crit table two. Okay, I'm on crit table two. Four. Ooh, uh, blow to the chest. <laughs> that was one. That 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 dart. <laughs> that blow, yeah, blow to the butt. <laughs> um, it staggers the foe. Mm-hmm. You can make an immediate free attack. Another one. Yes. All right. Uh, does a 10 do it? Uh, 10 does not hit. Okay. Bounces off the other dart. No! <laughs> Scream zinc. <laughs> All right. Harum. Okay. It's me. Uh, I I was uh, on top of the stone. He was, he's just gotten, you know... Uh, Stunned? Do I have any advantage? Do I get any bonus for the attack or just uh regular attack roll? Um the so that you do you are on top of the stone, but the creature is really big, so now you're just not sort of underneath it. You're kind of more at eye level. So I'd say this would probably still only be a normal roll. Okay. <laughs> Natural one. Time for a fumble table. What? Um. Uh. Oh gosh, how do we determine fumble stuff? Yeah, I, I, mine is uh, D twelve on the fumble table. Oh, okay. I got the fumble table up in front of me. Roll that D twelve. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Uh, Ooh. You accidentally smash your weapon against a solid, unyielding object. Like like a rock. Like a rock. Like the a the rock. creature moves out of the way too fast, and you smash your, your weapon against uh, the broken, stone. Right? Uh, yeah. The uh, mundane weapons are ruined. The magical weapon's yeah. not affected. Yeah. So, yeah, you had a spear, right? A uh-uh, long sword. A long sword. Yeah, you, you, bring your, you try to bring your long sword down on the creature, but it's too fast. And your long sword shatters against the rock of the sacrificial stone. Nice. No, my wow. only weapon. <laughs> oh no, uh, Bob. Uh, okay. Uh, Bob is going to try and run in and hit it with his spear that I totally knew that I had. Hmm. You were the one with the spear. I knew somebody had a spear. Does an 18 hit? An 18 definitely hits. Roll your damage. Okay. What is the damage? Uh, what? Four points of damage. Four points of damage. Great. I'm just going to run up and just like pretending that my spear is like a Lego. I'm just going to try and just get between the toes. Just jam it right in there. You're not going anywhere, buddy. 
Doug. Uh, Douglas is going to cast color spray. Say, be blinded, creature from the abyss. Huzzah! And a bunch of magical stuff comes out of my hands. Uh, 1d20 plus 1. Uh, 17! Heck yeah. Um, up to two individual targets within range, which we'll just do the, the hound. Has sure. to make a will save or be blinded for 1d4 rounds. Sightless creatures are immune. Uh, all right. Will save, will save. Will save. Ooh, plus zero to its will saves. 17 or higher. <gasps> are we going to take this down? Are we going to end this game right now? <laughs> the, creature is, the creature is totally blinded. Does anyone remember what happens when a when a monster is blinded? Like what the... Um, I just uh, go down the dice chain. Yeah. So it's I next attack. Just down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it can't uh, see. So like things like sneak attack and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's only one round. So <laughs> it's blinded for one round. And I say, take that. Yeah. Behold my <laughs> brilliance. Amazing. Uh, the creature blinded. Let's see. They're gonna try to slash um, wildly at the two people who are near them. Um, let's see if I can remember this dice macro for D16. <laughs> oh. I, yes, it was a two for a total of five. <laughs> That probably doesn't hit anyone. Yeah, who was mm -mm. who were you attacking? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna randomly determine between uh, yeah. Bob and Harum which one. Okay, <laughs> whoever I uh, could hit, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the uh, but it doesn't hit anybody. That was this is a terrible roll. Um, so yeah, it's it's blinded. It's yowling. It's not happy. It uh, yeah, it is now Zinc's turn. Uh man, uh the smartest thing to do would be to stay up here, but I don't like that. So uh Zinc is gonna use her agility to uh do a a flip off of the standing stone and onto the back of the creature dagger first. <laughs> oh nice. Do I need to roll for the flip as well yeah. as the <laughs> Yeah, I think you should roll for the flip. Thanks. Big, big thanks. And the book on page 78 says you get a plus two when you're attacking a blinded creature. Oh, nice. Yes, thank okay. you. I did get a 15 plus one for agility on my nice. jump. That's that's great. You, can, you flip onto the back of this thing. Yes. And the dagger, we'll see if I can get through its matted bloody fur. <laughs> um, well, I get a plus two on my attack. Yep. And then a plus... One for melee, so a 13. A 13 doesn't quite hit. So oh. it's like, man, that fur is really thick and really <laughs> gross. <laughs> so now my dagger's just caught in it, and I've got like a bridle situation going yes. on. Yes. I can ride at it. Least, okay, that's fine. Yeah, at least you won't be thrown off of it very easily. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So now the, now it's like a uh, kind of like a bull riding event mm -hmm. as, as Zink is holding onto the back of this blinded, enraged creature. Um, it is Harum's turn. Well, uh, it's blinded, it's confused, it has zinc on its back, so I'm gonna try to get my shield in the front and just push and try to uh, pin him between me doing the force and one of the standing stones and just try to crush it and like as stronger as, as I can. Mm, okay. Do I just make an attack? And do uh, like a mighty deed. I got a yeah, yeah. Do the use the deed die. Seventeen with a three on the deed die. Oh wow! So I, I might have made the deed. Yeah, because you your first level you have a d three for the deed die, right? Yep. So you yeah. Need a three. Yeah. Three or higher. I roll a thirteen on the twenty, a three on the deed die. I have plus one strength. Yeah. And the creature you... is blinded, so I have plus two, so I got a nineteen. Wow. You've pinned Take it. Take top games. <laughs> That's what it's all about. I love math. <laughs> Uh, you, Tables. You've done it. Um, it is pinned. Do I do any damage as I push him towards the stone and just try to? Wow. Oh, does it's, the stone wobble? I'm and a come warrior. Back on top of him. I'm a warrior. <laughs> I'm an attacking, and that's yeah. a mighty deed. 
Yeah. I'll give I'll give you two points of damage from you. You hear some of its ribs snap. Is it? Do I add my did die to that? Oh, the d don't okay. Yeah, <laughs> I give you one damage. You get to add your d die damage okay. to it because I yeah I forgot that that. Uh, Zinx, Zinx screaming, Harum's gold muscles! All the muscles from collecting gold! <laughs> I could do like a D3 plus or a D2 plus strength plus the die damage. I don't know. What do you think? No, I, I'll get, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one plus the D die you already rolled, so I'll okay. give you four damage. It was pretty solid. Um so but the creature is now pinned. Which probably gives people an additional bonus because now it's blind and can't move. If it's entangled, oh, yeah. which I kind of think this would be like a pin entangle yeah. bit, yeah. it's a plus one uh, die to your attack. So. Oh, so you have a so you'd roll a d twenty four instead of a d twenty. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Bob. Was Bob frozen? Oh no. You're very still. I thought you were frozen. <laughs> No, Bob just blue screened. Every thought went out of Bob's head for a moment. Uh, Bob is going to try and hit with the spear again. Okay. So remember, you're rolling a d24, and you get you still get to add plus two to your hit as well because it's still blind. Okay. Uh, so that's one. Twenty-four. It was a d24 plus what? Plus two? Plus two. Yep. Twenty-one. Yeah, that definitely hits. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then spear for two points of damage. Oh, okay. I'm imagining you saying spear, just... and the motion lines also say spear when you're moving. <laughs> A spear doesn't do the three points of damage. Oh it's yes, D eight, right? I you think so. do oh, a yeah. D eight plus a D three plus your I strength. Have... I have two. Okay, so it's D eight. Okay, because I have two sets of numbers here. One is with a D3 plus one, and the other is with a D8. Yeah, it's because so it's... you get, uh, dwarves get a D die, which is the thing that <laughs> yeah. uh, Diego so was just using earlier. Instead of an attack okay. roll, you have a die that you roll with it, and then you also do that damage on top of it. So instead of having like a D20 plus two to hit, you have a D20 mm -hmm. plus a D3. Does that make sense? Well, that's just it does now. Okay. <laughs> so you should just roll okay. your deed die, and you can do cool things with it, like I want to push this over, or I want to blind the guy. You kind of come up with it on the fly. It's fun. Yeah. Okay. Or so, so, yeah. yeah, so like the, the, the pin pinning the, it up against yeah. the, 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 the shield. Yeah. Okay, so uh, is my deed die also a deed die, also a D3? I believe yep. so. Yeah. yeah. That's the level one, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so that's plus. So that'd be nine with all that. Nice. Um, you drive your spear right through the neck of this creature, um, and it, it uh, yowls in pain, uh, throwing up black blood. Ugh, so gross. Mm. Um, that's not right. Yeah, as mm -hmm. it uh, crumples to the ground. What did this monster drink? <laughs> I've done. I've, I've only seen black vomit one time, and it was it was yeah, it was a bad night. <laughs> yeah, that was. Zink says sliding off the creature <laughs> 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 easily, hold using the the dagger as a <laughs> hold. <laughs> as, as the as the last breaths leave the creature you see that its body starts to rapidly dissolve into a black smoke um that That's swirls right. upward and then into the sky towards the north oh should to we, the north we... towards the north Fo we're following it we're... We... okay uh well how fast is it going? Can we follow yeah, it, yeah. or should we? It's it it kind of dissipate pretty fast. Yeah, okay. it's it's pretty fast. You could so, still try to to go northerly, but it would be difficult to follow. I think we'll have to repeat this every third night until we find that. Yeah, we need the spear. spear. The spear yeah. first. We we can just wait for it here with mm. the spear. So, I doubt the spear is right next to it. 
And it's, uh, it's name was uh, Alfie. Alfie killed it with the spear. We got to go find yeah, Alfie's Al- buried spe- serpent Al- mount. Yeah, that it's was so definitely Fionier, the name. Right? Alfie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alfionor. H- Heronier. <laughs> We're all very good at this. Um, I've never been uh, good with names. Alfionor. Uh, Alfionor. Uh, as the creature dissipates and its uh, misty form swirls off into the distance and our heroes are left standing among the standing stones now painted with the gore of the demon hound uh, and not Morgan and not and not Morgan uh, yeah. we're going to bring part one to a close uh, so, join us next week for part two of Doom of the Savage Kings uh, with my great cast. Who are you and what do you do, Sarah? Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Sarah Roberts, a.k.a. The Hype Goblin. You can find me everywhere under that name. If you'd like to see more of my actual play stuff or character cosplay content, uh, go to HypeGoblin.com and find all the places that you can find me. It's all linked there. Nice. Jen. Hi. You can find me as the Genya anywhere online. Uh, join me every first Friday on Roll20 for Fiasco First Fridays, uh, my actual play, and get my new book, Girls Make Movies. It's exactly what it sounds like. I drew it. Thank you. Love it. Diogo. Hi, uh, I am Diogo Nogueira. You can find me uh, wherever at, at Diogo uh, underline old school. Uh, I have a podcast called Weird Games and Weirder People, where I interview creators from the tabletop RPG scene, like writers, editors, artists, podcasters, and etc. to talk about the weird in themselves in the world. And you can get my latest game that just won an award for the Awards 2023 called Cosmos Hours. It's a game about space dinosaur rangers. You can find that at Zalted Funeral or on their stores too. Nice. Uh, all right. So, and you can catch Jordan and I here on a regular basis. So, jo- join us next time for the next part of Doom of the Savage Kings.